Ahas Aring Felev O Kiri Huig on Bautasha. Leshkel on Rinka Seta Vala on Vinonig. We meet Robert and Deirdre Stack as they recall happy memories of their times dancing with the Ballybunyan set. White horses galloping on the sand toss their startling Atlantic manes of girls selling seagrass on periwinkles. Whatever pain is in God's heart is in the sea that batters the black cliffs where I stand, aware of love's infinity and how infinitely little I understand. A man is carting seaweed near the rocks where I saw a brother and sister. Bob Stack and the Ballybunion dancers are all very welcome. Hello, Margaret. Tell me, polka sets are very popular down there, aren't they? Very, very popular. It was always the tradition in, in uh, Rand dances and in the local halls around where we came to pick up what we have today. Christmas night dance in Bale, in Hannans Hall. Uh, that was the first time I went to a real dance. The hay was taken out to the, the hall for the dance. It was the only time there'd be a dance there was Christmas night. And then again at Bale Fair in September. <coughs> so, uh, I was 15 at that stage and uh, but my, my dancing began the kitchen floor with my mother when the the, um, the Blue Danube would come on the radio that was my my first dancing so we graduated then and uh, the first reel that I took part in we cycled to Belly Longford to uh, uh, a Canberra Memorial dance. I suppose uh, it was uh, Sinn Féin at that stage anyway, but that was where I danced the first reel. I took part in the first reel because the lot of Mr. Jackie Inflahaven and Donald Mulvihill and Paul Breen recycled to Belly Langford. And uh, we didn't have, we weren't too sure where we were going really. Jackie Inn was the ringleader. And, uh, he was working at that stage and he paid the, the couple of bob for me to go into the dance. We had no money. I, I don't know. We were just always dancing. We were taught at school and by uh, Sheila Bowler, Sheila Lyons, the married to Bowler. In, uh, and uh, I kind of took it from there. To, I can't boast and say it was always natural but I just always loved dancing and singing and that was most important to me. Well I suppose when I came to Billy Bunnan and I met another dancer and it took off from there and I suppose Liam Buckley came up to, it was Liam Buckley that said it to myself first 
So like it started and took off from there then and it just didn't end until the legs went. Well you see, I never knew only a reel sets in Harden Pipe. It was an eight-hand reel, the four parts of the set and then a Harden Pipe. Now, never heard the word polka until Coltis branch started. And that was when, when uh, and then the reel was kind of forgotten about. Liam in, instigated the branch really it's a, it the branch, he yeah. instigated the branch, created the branch <coughs> and, and we had a coltus branch thing so we were under the, the banner of the coltus and, and uh, we linked up then with Belly Dunahoo. We were always stuck for music. <coughs> and Belly Bun and Lizelton. Belly Bun and Belly, Belly Dunahoo. Dunahoo. We were, that was the, the, the one branch thing. That, that was, was about 72, roughly, at that time. Yeah. Terrific. How's your, your fit people here? I wonder why we're not Ireland. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to give us another figure now, the third figure from a pork set, isn't that right? Yeah. A crossover, is it? Crossover of the trebles. It's, it's called, it's, um, it's two couples from the Batherin and back, and uh, the opposite two do the same and change places. <laughs> were invited to go to Dublin for a television programme and all they wanted was the half set, they didn't want the full set. So that's where it started, 1974 actually. And was dancing kind of, was sort of wound into the fabric of, 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 of the social happenings as well? Like oh God, very, and very much so, like in the, especially at Sapon. I was fortunate to be in Sapon on two occasions, like it was all sets and, and reads, sets and hard parts. Ah, Jesus. I'm sure. I mean, Chris Droney now was with us in England, and like to the day he died, we were we had stayed friends all the time. Do you know we met all Joe Burke was with us in America, Jimmy McGreevy, John Regan. Do you know all of those were just Donald Berry and uh, what's his name Maloney, Clarence Maloney, Tracy Kenny, Tracy Kenny, then Marie, Marie Wogan, Donnacombe Unicorn. Jackie Scandlin and like we had stayed friends with them all down along the line. It was, it was well, our life. That was our life and we just absolutely loved dancing, loved music. And ba was, ballroom as well as, 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 as traditional. Would you still love it? Oh mm -hmm. we still love it yeah. And like if at that time if there was a nice bit of of uh, music and the the radio or on a CD, like we'd get up and we'd dance to it above at home. You know. It was the most enjoyable thing we ever did. For me anyway. We were in in uh we were invited to Carriga Holt, that was the early days. Mm -hmm. And the fan built broke in the car coming home. And uh, who took off the nylons? Matta. Matta took off the nylons. To make a fan built. To make a fan built. So we were going to the flat at the ferry bridge one morning. We were sitting in the wall waiting for the ferry to come in and the ballots arrived and Patricia said oh god I'm awful sorry she said a cow stood on in her leg Padraig Moynihan was playing for us and they were dancing in the competition and she danced in the competition with Padraig Moynihan's shoes because her own shoes wouldn't fit her and they won the competition we 
the functions at that time now, all the different clubs that had their, their call to socials, like behind in the Manhattan, like you'd go and you'd dance all night long. But you see, you just had, we'll say the Kerry set that time, you didn't have all the other ones. And life was a siege of Anissa in all time walls and a set and you did that all night. The walls of Limerick? Yeah. 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 Lifelong friends. Lifelong friends. Definitely. The cards still go to America from the houses we stayed in. And we took part in different competitions then in Ennis and we won the All Ireland and it was announced at 12 o'clock at night and I can still see Liam Buckley here really and truly. He got so excited. You couldn't say he nearly lost his teeth because he didn't have teeth, but like he was absolutely ecstatic that night. Yeah, we beat the Mullock, I've said that night, and they were... <coughs> and they that was our thing, it was like trying to beat the Dubs now or to beat Kerry, but like when we beat the Mullock set dancers, we were there. We had loads of great times, simple times in comparison to today. And then we were invited on the, the American, the English Coltis tour to be part of that. That was in 19, February 1978. We did that for two weeks and then we went on the American tour in October 1978 for three weeks. The sessions in England were absolutely fantastic. After all the shows, you had the, the, the sessions afterwards, and they were magical. Our memories. <laughs> It is always uplifting to hear family playing music together. And there you have just heard the Fogarty family from Ballybunion keeping that tradition alive. We now continue our journey 10 miles inland to the lovely town of Listowel, which hosted Fla Cione Heron on 14 different occasions between 1970 and 2002. There is no doubt that some great memories will be recalled as we talk to those fortunate enough to be in Listowel back then, where many a great session were held on the streets, in the town square, or in the bars, and were enjoyed by young and old. The name I bear is Sam McGuire. I'm Irish to the core. That dear old land from north to south, I travel o'er and o'er. From east to west, I've met the best, but still wherever I roam. I long to hear the Kerry cheer, the Kerry is my home. I love to see those Kerry Hills. I've loved those hills of old. 
the little streams that laugh their way through glens of green and gold. The lovely lakes, the rugged rocks, the dash of ocean's foam. Oh, to hear that Kerry cheer, or Kerry is my home. How grand to see our Kerry boys dash dauntless in the fray. Our goalie backs in centre field upon All Ireland Day. Our fiery forwards flowing free as sweetly as a poem. And then to hear a Kerry cheer, a Kerry, my home. Yes, Kerry, I am back again to where I most belong, to hear you praise your gallant sons in story and in song. Let wild delight and bonfires bright rise up to heaven's dome, and then to hear a Kerry cheer, a Kerry is my home. Beautiful is stole, serenaded night and day by the gentle waters of the river field. The stole where it is easier to write than not to write, where false love never dies, and the tall streets hide the loveliness, the heartbreak, and the moods great and small of all the gentle souls of a great and good community. Sweet, incomparable hometown that shaped and made me. I don't know. I started off in 1970 as being the chief steward. Chief steward, okay. Yeah, yeah. Now, uh, I had the Lord to rest in Timmy Lee in Mount Rivers. He was the chairman that year. The top dean more or less, I, I was the chairman. Chairman. Uh, I suppose my, my memories of my father, Michael Dowling's involvement in the FLAS, um, they're all bright, they're all happy, they're all full of fun. I mean, my father loved Irish music and he just loved Irish culture and he loved everything to do with the FLA and, you know, putting Listowel on the map and inviting all these people into the town and running what was really a very well-run international programme. And he, he was full of joy, it energised him to be involved in it. Um, I remember it would start uh, well early where they'd be having meetings about a bid. Now that was the word I remember uh, for it, the bid that they'd be putting in to host the FLA. And they'd be con oh, big conversations about who else was in and what were the pros and cons of the different um, towns. And they would be trying to show how Listowel would be able to top all that and um, meet every criteria. And the excitement then when they would be awarded it. I, I will always remember uh, the lines, we got it. He'd come in the back door, we got it, we got it. And you didn't even have to ask what we got it meant. It meant the flowers coming to Listowel. And from that moment then on, uh, it would be just you know, pure strategy, um, putting together that plan to show the Stowell office its best and to host these thousands of people and to give them a great time. Um, and it wasn't, you know, it wasn't just about competition or it wasn't just about um, grades. Or, it was all about bringing people, people that loved music, people that didn't play music, people that played music, people that could only play a few notes, people that loved to listen to music. Uh, and people that were completely expert. Bring them all together and most of all enjoyment and fun and the arms of a community just opening to bring them on and you know enjoy the crack with them. Even the troublemakers <laughs> they enjoyed the crack any little bit of trouble you know it was it was all in good fun and um, my memories of it are, are of a town shining gleaming um, all the people I knew involved in some way um, with organising or stewarding or making tea or manning doors or carrying pianos or getting tuners in. Um, I remember great fun travelling around town as a very small child with my father on the tractor as he was moving chairs. Uh, I remember a great day moving a stage um, and loads of laughter. Um, as they were trying to put down a, a stage outdoors. Um, I think that one was up by the cinema. Um, and just, I suppose there was no, I don't ever remember since the stress about it. I just remember people happy and people, you know, delighted to be involved um, and just joyous about the celebration that was coming. 
Um, and, I, and I remember my mother, a great support in all of that. And, you know, she'd be getting her tape recorders ready and, you know, she'd go off to the singing and, you know, she'd get the programmes and we would, as children, sell the programmes. So we were all involved. It was a huge community effort and um, I think everybody that was involved was incredibly proud of it. So that, that would be my main memory of it, of something really, really special. You know, he knew his people, he knew the people around him and, and that was so, I think that was the nicest thing about it because, you know, these weren't, it, it wasn't him as a leader and these are all the people doing the work. He knew the people and he knew their strengths. So it was every skill you need as a people manager, he was able to, to employ it. Um, and again, he was a man who always said, Do you know, um, Ara, forget about it. Forget about it was one of his comments. Ara, don't, don't worry about it. Move on, move on. Look forward. I suppose uh, um, the first line in the uh, I, I got my first job judging at an all island flat. And uh, myself and Leon Rosen judged the senior concert flute, which was won by a man with Kerry connections, Billy Clifford, you know. And I think it was also pulled into the, to the Kelly Band competition, which was held in the by school hall, right in the morning at the time. And uh, I, we judged the Kelly Band competition as well. When the, the flag came to the stall, the All Island flag, we were competing in a few of them. We played a duet and um, we were second in the duets one time, weren't we? Yeah, we were. And, and um, I played in the senior recording a, a few times and you played in the fiddle, didn't you? I did, yes, in 72. Uh, I would have played in the whistle as well in 71, but that was the one that was cancelled. You remember, 71 was cancelled over uh, Northern Troubles, and the competitions were moved to the Flamu in 72 in Dublin. So the any competition from 71 was held in 72 in Dublin. I, I think uh, you compete. We got second at the jury, I think. I won the whistle, and uh, you also played in the accordion. The competition the same day. In Dublin? Yes, I think Paddy Gavin won it. Right. I used to be looking forward to the flan, the stall, and uh, the involvement in the, the committee and going into the meetings. And Michael Dowling, of course, was, was the backbone of that committee. We took great fun with Michael, and, and uh, uh, he was very good. All the other members of the committee were good as well, you know. I was involved in the Flakhorn Herden Committee in the store from 1981 onwards. Mm -hmm. because people came from all over the world, far away in Japan, 
mannequins, of course, were, were we had numerous mannequins, and um, they, they, even to this present day, they all talk about the stall as being the most suitable venue mm-hmm. in Ireland for uh, the grassroots people, you now we'd call them. They're the people that, 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 that they love this stall, they made a lot of friends there. Great memories all together. You know, there was, there was sessions all over the place. There was great entertainment in the square, of course. Of course, the Cayley Band competition and all these competitions, they were wonderful all together. Oh, it was great entertainment all together. So, t- it was so enjoyable you now that, as I mentioned earlier on, that when, when uh, any time I went to other stars up the country, anywhere I met people that were in the stall, the first salute is, when are you coming back with the flat to the store digging for us? People wanted to come back to the very popular venue. And of course, in 1972, uh, the leader of the Brass Nakiri Band, we, we won the All Ireland in 72 uh, with the Brass Nakiri Band. And around the same day, Don O'Connor bought a, a pub in the store. It was Guyanese pub at the time, that was 72. And uh, he had it running for, for the next fly, I think, in 73. So uh, there were sessions there the whole year round. And there was a lot of street sessions. Street sessions were being gained then. Yes. They were great. You could find a session there on the steps of the bank near Carroll's in the square. And that was usually a great uh, venue for yes, a session. Yes. Yeah, the square was always great for sessions. And I would say, first of all, the success of the flat in the store was due to one thing. There was a hundred percent cooperation between the guards and the committee. And there was a hundred percent cooperation between the committee and the people who were doing meals and bed and breakfast. I, I suppose they were a flash to them and so on. Well, but to go back, there was 14 flash in the store and I was involved in the 14 of them. Oh God, it was, that was fantastic, because everywhere you went, you turned, there was music, and real music. Uh, it made Ballyabun, and for that week. And then the Kormenikon and Helen, they came down all the time and stayed with us. And then we'd be going to the different Kayleys and the different, the Nukha was more into dancing, but like we'd be gone maybe two hours before it and began around to the four pubs listening to, for the sessions as well as you had fantastic street sessions that time and then the weather always seemed to be better but it just was the store was a fantastic venue because everything was within walking distance yeah you parked your car you could walk to every venue walk in and out and there was no sitting into cars or running here or there and the all ireland Kelly Band competitions in Listowel were just magical. I I remember vividly the excitement at the flas. 
I remember people arriving from Dublin, which was a big thing in those days, and they'd drive into the yard. I remember um, my mother um, having impromptu tea and sandwich sessions in our kitchen and people taking out instruments and playing a few tunes. Um, I remember people dancing in our in our kitchen and this would be on the lead in to Skolaigse. Um, I remember you know that um, you could feel it building for weeks in advance. You could feel you could feel the energy rising. Um, you could feel the town rising to the occasion and you could see buildings being painted and signs going up and uh, pianos being moved and you know pitches being inspected and um, all the sort of you know the prep going on and then the first day of the Skolaigse. That was a milestone as well because in 74 in the Stole that was the first Skolaigse. It started there in the Stole in 1974 and uh, I was doing fiddle, uh, Mary Bergen was doing whistle, uh, Mihalo Halloon who was just started coming back from uh, South America on a tour, on a holiday, was doing flute, and I think Leon, Leon Rosen was doing pipes, and I think maybe Don Labara was doing the accordion. That was 1974, and I had the total of eight fiddlers that year. The two McWhinnie sisters from Dublin, uh, a girl by the name of Roma Casey, Edith McWhinnie, Nolag Nikahasi from Cork, we had three boys, Sean Montgomery, Dublin, uh, Andrew O'Connell, Kilnamatra, and Seamus Clacken. That was our that was our our fiddle class anyway that year. The Flas in those days, uh, the whole community came behind it, and uh, the stall wouldn't have as much uh, availability of accommodation. Uh, so people opened up their homes, and they took in people uh, for bed and breakfast, and those. Friendships continued even to this day. Those families are in contact and their children are in contact again, talking about the wonderful times that they had uh, in family homes. And I suppose Michael Dowling, who the Lord Merson, who was chairman uh, all the years with me, uh, we were a good combination because Michael was the peacemaker. I was. Uh, I was getting the thing done and I might be standing on people's toes and things and Michael would always be the peacemaker and it was great and we had a great uh, relationship in that and I think that stood to us, you know, we had two sides to the thing. Well I love the flag because it, 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 carries, it carries on our hopes and when it succeeds it means that we have really accomplished something which uh, fathered us tight to the side for generations. And I remember when the first flag came here, I remember like it was, it was a revelation to the townspeople to think that they are kind of to the forefront in world traditional music. Wonderful, wonderful. It's a wonderful thing. It's unbelievable. The, the people from themselves and by themselves have created a magnificent form of traditional music. You could listen to it, I could listen to it forever. Yes. Learning the tradition and they are delighted to be in Ireland. I listen to them and I have had contacts with them over the years. This to them is the acme of perfection. To, to be accepted at the FLA in, in, in the store. And uh, <coughs> I can't wait to get down to town or to take a walk around. Take another walk around in the evening, another one in the city. Has anything changed? But there's always the music. The Monday night in, of course, was often a, a mighty night all together with sessions. But uh, I'll always remember another night of the Monday night, the, the piano, we got the piano behind from the convent, and it was either in St. Michael's, I think, and the piano had to be taken back to uh, the convent on the Monday night. And how are we going to do it? Anyway, Michael Dowling brought the jeep and the trailer, we put it into the trailer and the, the piano had to be held firm in the trailer and my job was to stand in to the trailer holding the piano and he drove on down the town 
roll and open, and that's the way we, and he was going, I was telling him, go slower, and then shout then from the seat, we don't play an old tune for us, neither in our life. So I had my own job of watching the piano, I fear it might fall, that's a great memory, I have that in you. I have, I had, you know, I had, I had different jobs, you know. I never had a special job at the factory. Uh, but one year, anyway, my job was to collect results at the different venues and bring them into the flag committee. Uh, you know, it was hard to get through that same with the car. I don't think I was doing it fast enough for some of the organisers. So I think, I think I only held that position for one flag. <laughs> And the crowds and, and, and the colour and, and the music and the flags. That's something beautiful about about uh, marching bands. Eighty six attack was was, yeah. was the peak. Okay. Special. Mm -hmm. I had I always struck my memory as being a great flag. That was Was the weather good? Fantastic for that weather. Okay. And fantastic crowd. The the the, the, the atmosphere was terrific mm -hmm. and the sessions were was fantastic. And, and the thing about the stole was, uh, because the stole was a right size of a town in those days for a flat. Now, it couldn't hold an All-Ireland flat today, but in those days it was. Now, if you stood in the small square in the stole, if you wanted to meet somebody, and you were from whatever part of Ireland, and you stood in the small square and you spent a half an hour there, guaranteed you'd meet whoever you were wanted to meet, because that was you know, going to the square and to the streets, you know, and that it was just very compact and people liked that. I, I thought the sessions were the, was the most beautiful part of the Flas in Listowel because it's such a small town and compact town. It lent itself lovely to, to the sessions. Um, absolutely, Maguire Steps, the Arms Hotel, above by St John's Church, the wall there, in front of the Bank of Ireland. You know, there's a few of the Georgian step type houses and they lent themselves lovely for seating. Yes, you had you had people who were always meant to play outside. Dennis McMahon uh, from Castle Island, the man with the hat, he was he was, he was the street session leader himself and Antoine McGowan, you know, they, they played, and Marcus Omerico, they played forever on the street, you know. I think, I think even Antoine made, made, made a CD one time, they called it Windowsill, Windowsill Sessions, was the name of the CD, I think. <laughs> Oh, windowsill was a great bonus altogether. Yes, the windowsill was. Because yes. the windowsill sit yeah, up on. Yeah, yeah. Even when when all of us do, that do remember have passed on, the facts are still there. The stole was a magnificent venue for Flacky and the Heron. It was ran brilliantly. Everybody that came loved it. The people opened their arms and they they accepted. You know, all these uh, people into their world and gave them a great time. I don't think he really did any of it for praise. He did it because he loved it. Lots of amazing memories. Um, and those memories facilitated by just a mighty group of people that had just such vision, just such vision and inclusivity and kindness and respect and welcome and I would say that their legacy will always live on because you know we had those flowers here people have their memories 
you know, people might move on to wherever they go to, but the memories are always there for people and, and the legacy is there. And they were just mighty, mighty, mighty people. They did their absolute best and my God, it was, it was a joy to be part of it.